calls with some news you can use. The big news that we got since the last Thursday call uh, was, of course, the Supreme Court's ruling on the national eviction ban. Uh, as we talked about, although the district court and the appellate court at the federal level upheld the Biden administration eviction ban extension, uh, the Supreme Court came in and struck it down with immediate effect. So it is over and done with. This is the second time the Supreme Court has had to rule on this issue. Um, they're they're going to be pissed if they got to do it again. I don't think there's going to be any way short of an act of Congress to reinstitute this eviction ban. So what that did was um, once it's no longer in effect, that freed up all of these states or primarily all the states to go ahead and evict folks who have not been paying their rent for whatever reason, even if it's COVID or, or so on and so forth. Um, that's approximately 11 million Americans that are currently behind on their rent. Uh, a large number of those folks will be forced out of where they're living now have to find new homes, and that's gonna also free up those homes for those of us in the business to buy because a lot of those landlords are going to be uh, and are frankly just tired of the whole thing. They, they're done with this deal, they, they're so over it. Now there are four states and the District of Columbia, Washington, DC, that will continue to ban evictions on a state basis, which I, I believe they have the, the, re, the uh, the ability to do so on a, a, a constitutional basis. So uh, Illinois uh, has banned evictions till September 19th. California ban will last until September 30th. New Jersey and DC uh, will curb proceedings until January 2020. New Mexico has an eviction moratorium in effect, uh, but an expiration date hasn't been announced. And of course, uh, there is the state of New York, which ends today. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of things going on out there. States could come in. And in fact, that's what the current administration is doing. They're pushing on the various states to uh, enact bans. Um, I, you know, at some point, this thing is going to end. But right now, uh, in at least 44, 45 states, uh, evictions can start and, and have been starting since uh, last Friday. So that's going to make a big difference for in everybody's business. You're going to see a flush of properties come to the market. A lot of people wanting to sell, a lot of landlords wanting to get out, uh, a lot of new tenants uh, wanting to get into homes that they've just been evicted from or if they are working a cash for keys deal, they've done something like that. So you got to be careful who you're putting in your homes. If you've got somebody who's had to be physically removed from a house, I would definitely not put them into one of my houses. Uh, we've talked before about, you know, the, the need to screen your tenants in advance. Um, I don't have a problem if somebody has gotten behind in bills, but has fessed up to it, owned up to it and done something about it. Um, when you have to take something away from someone like a car or a house um, and they wait till that last minute when the sheriff kicks them out of the house or the repo guy repossesses the car, those are not the people I would put into my properties. Um, so I would, I would look for those two things. Short of that, bad credit, criminal record, I don't care about those things. Um, I do care about somebody who's had to be physically removed from a house or a car uh, because they couldn't get their, their own act together. So good news. We knew it was coming. Uh, we knew the Supreme Court would rise to the occasion and somebody, Supreme Court is, is at least uh, effectuating the Constitution and not allowing these things to happen. So that's, that's all good stuff. Um, there are a couple of other things. This is going to be a big news you can use day. And let me talk about... Um, the overvalued housing markets. I want to change and pivot here slightly. There are, we've talked about a lot of these markets are, have frothed up and they are overpriced. So these would be the markets I would expect the biggest drop in prices. I would be careful in these markets. The worst overpriced market is Boise, Idaho. Uh, number two, Austin, Texas. Number three, Ogden, Utah. Number four, Provo, Utah. Number five, one of my places, Detroit, Michigan. Number six, Spokane, Washington. Number seven is Salt Lake City, Utah. 
eight is Phoenix, Arizona. I know we've got clients in Phoenix. That's 42%, a little over 42% overpriced right now. Uh, number nine, Las Vegas, Nevada. And number 10 is Stockton, California, which surprisingly, or not maybe not surprisingly, uh, it and Austin were in the top five uh, markets that the Board of Realtors suggested you invest in earlier this year. So that's why I would always hesitate to watch and, and put any credence in where the Board of Realtors says these are going to be the hottest housing markets. They were right. They are the hottest markets. But if you got in, uh, you know, in January, February, the market is now turning down southward. And in the case of Boise, Idaho, you know, you're talking about 81, almost 81% uh, premium on the price. So in other words, a nine, a $500,000 house, uh, people are paying $900,000 for, and they could be as much as $400,000 over frothed on the, the price of the house um, versus where it should be in the marketplace itself. So that's, that's not a good thing. I would uh, be very careful, stay away from those markets. Uh, if you're there, I would sell as soon as you can to get out and at least trap some of the profit if you've made some uh, in that uh, deal. Now, third thing on our news you can use. You guys uh, heard me talk about this over the last couple of weeks. Um, and it's once again uh, coming from the land of fruits and nuts out here in California. Uh, and it's not that California is looking to be the first state to pay people to stay sober. We're going to talk about that next week. Um, government intervention and in actually the lives of people. We're literally going to start paying people to stay off of drugs and, and not drink. But uh, we did pass last week, uh, Senate Bill SB9. We talked about that, I think, about a week ago. And this is the bill that is uh, in the process of going to make it illegal to build a single family house in California. Um, Oregon has already passed a version of this law and signed it into law. But basically what this says, uh, and this has not yet been signed by our emperor here in California, Governor Newsom, uh, but I suspect it will be. Uh, it will override all local zoning ordinances and all rules and not allow anybody to get a permit to build a single family house on a single lot. It'll have to be a duplex and above for all new builds. Um, this will create about, it's estimated this will create about 900,000 new housing units a year. Uh, the most we've ever been able in our best year ever been able to produce in California is about 100,000 brand new housing units. We do have a housing problem in California. I'm not sure this is the way to fix it because um, this is going to drive house prices and values down. Um, it's it's going to be a real interesting thing. The, the battle is being pitched as uh, pro-housing millennials versus older uh, single-family housing uh, boomers, baby boomers, um, you know, and it'll be interesting to see what happens. Newsom has to sign it to make it law, but I suspect it is going to be signed, and you will see this in other places in the country because frankly, we just don't have enough new housing to cover, you know, the new home buyers in the marketplace out there. And this is one way to get around that. So everything that's going to happen from here on out, there'll be two houses on one lot or a duplex or a triplex. It's the bill was passed that up to 10 units can be built um, and, and essentially be grandfather, grandfathered in under this, this uh, bill. So I will keep you guys up to date uh, what happens, and we're going to see how this eats into property values. Um, and I'm not sure how they're even going to allow you to sell off one house, for example, without selling the other if they're both on the same lot. So we're creating new law. We're creating a whole brand new thing out here in California that's it's going to really change the way that houses are looked at. Um, by the way, that they, they said this will create about 900,000 new first time home buyer homes a year uh, with this method versus the 100,000 we're building. The market for new home buyers in California is something like a half a million a year. So we don't have enough. I'm not sure this is the way to do it. So we'll see. Uh, once again, this is gonna put everybody on top of everybody else. This is gonna increase 
what we see in, in areas like San Diego, where everybody's living in big high rises now, their you know, condo life is the thing. Uh, this will be the suburban version of condo life. You'll have, you know, instead of one family, two to nine, uh, two to 10 on one piece of ground. So, uh, you know, watch for more COVID. Uh, it'll start here because everyone's gonna be jammed in. So very interesting times that we're in. Uh, it's uh, crazy, uh, crazy weird, but it's also it's some golden opportunities out there if you keep your eyes and ears open. And we'll, we'll always endeavor to give you guys the, the latest and keep you up to speed uh, in terms of how to play these things and what to do with them. Uh, in the meantime, let's... Uh, go ahead and get to some of our callers today and see if we can get your specific okay. questions. In chat, Dawn was asking, won't this cause demand for single family houses to go up? <clears throat> no, it'll cause them to go down because people won't, if they sell, uh, the buyer will be able to put a duplex on there. It's going to drop the property value because the value is going to be in the single family homes that are in you know, say in the family that can get passed from generation to generation. Otherwise, uh, when it sells, there's an automatic, if this thing gets signed, there'll be an automatic authorization to build a second house or to take that house and divide it into two. You, the homes that are on their own lots, like just think of places like Beverly Hills, we have large lots and large homes. Those have a higher value than if one of those homes was converted over to a, an apartment. Once they, that happens one time in the neighborhood, all the other property values go down. On that one house, it may increase it because it would turn it into a commercial unit. And those are based on cap rates, the amount of rents you can get, or in the case of Airbnb, the total income you can bring in per month. Um, so for that one house who does it first, it could be a boom. Uh, everybody else, though, their value is going to drop because now they live in a neighborhood of not single family home buyers, but a combination with mixed neighborhood, uh, which is a lot of people in one area and right next door, single people. And so it's going to be very hard to, uh, you know, be able to get uh, peace and quiet uh, that a lot of folks in California like to enjoy. But so we use a lot of land to build houses on in California and for that purpose, you know, everybody wants acreage out here. Uh, that's going to make uh, you know, no sense going forward in the future because you build something you're going to be able to get, uh, you know, a lot more units on it. And people just don't want to live next door. They don't want to be living in their dream home next to an apartment complex. So it will drive down the values of the houses. Let's see. We have other questions in chat before we go to our callers. Actually, nope, you're good. 